Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I featured the Orion 3 space plane and showed off its interior and we are continuing from that with the re-entry testing of the Orion 3 space plane. So here we have the first attempt at re-entry. Actually in this case we are lifting the orbit up just a little bit with the Prometheus vacuum engines in order to get a better re-entry approach and then we deorbit with the RCS there. So this is immediately after the previous video. I immediately tried to do a re-entry. As you might guess, this didn't work out perfectly because this is the first attempt at doing this. And while we had the center mass and center lift indicators in the VAB and what Fermi Aerospace Research can tell me, uh, that isn't super precise and we actually need it pretty darn precise. So it turns out you can see the pitch is maxed out down, which means that the center of mass is too far back. And so I needed to move the COM offset, the center of mass, further forward. After all, the exact location of the center of mass is sort of fungible on this fictional ship. Uh, well, yeah, things have not worked out very well. We're actually on a, uh, on a good path to Cape Canaveral there, you can see, but that's about all I can say about that. And uh, yeah, uh, much has been ripped apart. Uh, we are benefiting from the fact that the heat shielding is basically all around the thing instead of just on the bottom. I try to uh, get Val out of her seat, but this is not a good idea as it turns out. And so they're basically doomed. But don't worry, uh, we will revert and try again. It is just a test after all. And yep. Yeah. There goes that. Now before I make the center of mass adjustment and try again, that will require a restart, so I decided to test the carrier plane again because we've made some changes. The carrier plane is now going faster by the time the space plane decouples from it, and so I needed to check whether it could land safely at Cape Canaveral given that. For those who didn't see the previous video, the carrier plane has nine Raptor sea level engines on it, that's what powers it. And so it's also methane oxygen. Uh, that just seemed to be the best thing given the volume of the carrier plane and the space plane. So again, we have methane oxygen on the space plane as well, but those are Prometheus vacuum engines. Uh, might change it to Hydrolox. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. There are many different configurations, especially when we start using KSP Interstellar and putting those things on to these planes. But we'll see. Anyway, so decoupling off the space plane, and we want to far follow the carrier plane now. But actually, I should have had the space plane go forward a bit with its engines, as we'll soon see. So we've reserved a little bit of fuel in here in order to use the RCS, that's important. As we hit the atmosphere on the way down again, the wings seem to flex quite a lot. And I was not expecting that. I did not auto strut the wings. I should have. And in fact, that's the main change that I make to this. But here we are trying to hit the atmosphere in the best way possible. This is the skip off part, which it would have to do. There's a space plane going down because it didn't use its engines to move it forward. And the fact that it was uh, basically in render range when it exploded might have caused some physics issue with our plane here. I don't know, the, 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 the game is, uh, of course this is a very intense period for this plane, and for some reason the wings went like that. The wings just sort of flop like that. They're not disconnected, they're still on the body, they're still connected, they just sort of, well you see it, <laughs> I mean, they did that. So, I don't know, I think it's some sort of physics thing where it was trying, it was busy both trying to deal with the re-entry of this and calculating the explosions and it was not happy with that. That's my theory. Anyway, so, well, the wings are still sort of bendy and floppy, but they're working and I try and get back to Cape Canaveral, but this obviously is not the ideal situation. We can't have our wings be disconnected like that or flopping around. I mean, uh, flexing is normal for a plane, but um, I'm getting the feeling from this that this is not properly physics 
Ing, I guess you could say. So here we go. We're going in. And yeah, I really should take those jets off and dump the kerosene. I'll need to do that. Um, we don't seem to need it. I can do the dead stick landing just fine. Uh, pretty consistently. Well, okay, except for the little body flaps on the tail. <laughs> those, those I lose. Yeah. But other than those... It was all right, despite all the, all the abnormalities in this case. And uh, given that, I was able to make the edit and we tried again, actually in a different stream. This is all during live streams. So, yeah. Now the center of mass on the space plane has been moved forward by two meters. I chose that number on the bet that that would be too much, actually. And it was. I'm uh, sorry, spoilers. But... Yeah, uh, it should be overdoing it, and but I just wanted to make sure I had a range. So we know that the original number was too far back, and my theory was that this two meters forward would be too far forward, and it would have to be somewhere in the middle, and I'll, I would hit that number at some point. So here we go, going off to orbit. We will test the carrier plane again once we verify that the space plane is in good condition. Unfortunately, I was talking away with the Twitch chat and we ended up in a lopsided orbit here. So very high apoapsis. But I decided to just take that. We, re we got to a re-entry periapsis. I aimed for about 20 kilometers, which is still higher than I do with the shuttle. And so here we go, entering the atmosphere. Using the Prometheus engines to do any burns while in space is tricky if there's not a whole lot of fuel left. The, the short burns, they, they, they don't have that much throttling on them, and they're very powerful, so... Yeah, it can be difficult to do things precisely, but then the RCS is somewhat weak right now. I checked in far, and it turns out that this is stable at 35 kilometers at Mach 5.4, so I had the Mach number up to make sure that... I didn't pitch down until we got to Mach 5.4 and I knew that basically this plane was stable at that point and so it can fly normally. It actually flies better than the shuttle partly, well mainly because of its very well contoured body, right? The shuttle, it's not, it's built for drag basically, I mean, uh, the, the body in particular is not the most streamlined thing on the planet. So, yeah, this handles a lot better thanks to its body. And I needed to kill some velocity here in order to make a landing, but it was just happenstance that we managed to get back to Cape Canaveral. I didn't know what the right periapsis to hit Cape Canaveral was, uh, and I wasn't intending to get into the orbit that we were in in the first place, so it was pure luck in this case, but... Unfortunately, our pitch gets maxed out. We are, in fact, too nose-heavy, but I only find out right on approach. So, throughout re-entry, it was pretty high on the pitch, but it didn't affect our trajectory very much until we came in for a landing and the fact that we were nose-heavy, well, caused that. We, we basically were not able to pull up and flare prior to landing. Well, it's not even the flare, it's just trying to mitigate our vertical speed. So anyway, needed to move the center mass a little bit further back. So we had moved it two meters forward, and now I move it a half meter back. And try and see if that works out. It's all very fine-tuned, we we're only talking about... The functional range for a space plane like this is like within a meter, so... Um, that is where it's safe. So it can be pretty touchy. This time I still get into a lopsided orbit, but it's a better lopsided orbit. I mean, 400 kilometers on the apoapsis instead of 500. But unfortunately, I, I decided to go with the same periapsis, and that means we are almost certainly going to be falling short in this case because we're starting off lower and then we have a low, uh, the same periapsis. We're going to end up falling short. So maybe it would have been better just going with the same apoapsis just for the heck, uh, just for making sure that we get to Cape Canaveral. But anyway, uh, you can see the pitch authority usage is about half right now, 
which is less than it was. But then we, when we get lower, it gets closer to maxing out here. So that's not wonderful, and that means that the center mass can still be moved further back. I'm just pointing out the nice streamlined body because I like it. Anyway, but, uh, you know, it's good. I mean, it helps. And here we are going through the clouds. I think in Louisiana is where we ended up touching down. Even though we're just plunging right into the ground there, uh, we were still using pitch, which was annoying and worth noting. So again, yeah, definitely the center of mass needs to be moved a little bit further back. But at least this time we weren't maxing out the pitch on final approach here. And we'll see our touchdown speed. The little uh, thing on the tail sticking out does not have a collider on it, thankfully. A little bit faster than the shuttle. And we could probably get it down at the same speed as the shuttle. The STS space shuttle. But that was good enough, even though we didn't make it to Cape Canaveral, I decided that was good enough for me. We'll refine the return to the Cape part later. Now I needed to make sure that we could get the carrier plane back safely without having flappy wing syndrome. And so this time the carrier plane's wings have been auto-strutted. Note that we're launching from Brownsville and we are head in a 75 degree heading. That's the heading that you need in order to get to Cape Canaveral from Brownsville. So uh, it could be 76 or something like that. 75 is just easier to remember. Anyway, the four bottom raptors are off in order to maintain balance. And then we reserve a little bit of fuel in order to have the RCS control and decouple off the space plane. But we're still carrying the jets and the kerosene even though I don't use these things. Technically, I think the original design for the Orion carrier plane, I think it, as somebody said it was the Orion one, but I don't like that. But uh, because we have other things called Orion now and we might as well reserve Orion one for those. But yeah, I think the original design did have air breathing engines. The space planes air breathing qualities. Uh, uh, supposedly it had air intakes on the edge of the wing, but I have no idea how that worked or where that was going, or I, I don't like that aspect of the Orion 3 space plane, so we'll just skip that. Speaking of skipping, here we are skipping off the atmosphere intentionally. Uh, lots of g-forces though, that's the downside to this. Uh, this uh, The carrier plane would be better off automated, not piloted, uh, for sure. It's better if there are no pilots. <laughs> it's uh, pretty pretty drastic. Uh, we get up to about 11 G's on this skip off and you know I, I decided this time to have the pitch mild instead of going at a full 40 degrees. I don't know which way is better but this worked. We don't have the wings ripping off. I also allowed the space plane to use its engines for a while so it would be pushed away from our uh, physics range just in case that that had an effect. So our wings are in a good situation this time and we're coasting along to a landing at the Cape. Again, uh, taking a look at the Mach number, uh, this is has very similar characteristics to the Orion 3 space plane. It's got basically the same wing and similar structure. So when Ferrum Aerospace Research takes a look at it, it says that the vertical stabilizers are good enough for Mach 5.4 so just I tend to just want to keep the angle up and make sure that we're coming in sort of like a capsule until we get to about Mach 5.4 and then we can pitch down and do a normal airplane sort of deal. Anyway here we are coming in for a landing and I was cognizant of the fact that I had the little body flaps rip off last time so trying to avoid that. We do have air brakes on here. We actually have drag chutes, though I do not use those. And I land off center, but hey, uh, in terms of skills, I'll skip the whole using the rudder to make sure I'm perfectly centered on the runway, and I'll take the being able to do a dead stick landing from space part. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take the skills that I've got. I'm good. Uh, I don't need to land on the center line, it's fine. So 
Yeah. I think I can pretty safely ditch the jet engines and the kerosene, which should give us better performance. I don't really want this to get any faster. So that's that's the rub. If we get better performance, that means that when this decouples off the space plane, this will be going faster, which is better off for the space plane. That means the space plane will have more spare delta V. But will we be able to recover this safely is a uh, question mark then. Anyway, with those thoughts and these successes, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.